Charles Barney Corey was an American ornithologist, golfer and occasional writer. Born in 1857 in Boston, the son of import merchant Barney Corey, he was educated at Harvard University's Lawrence Scientific School and Boston Law School, though he left both early. Meanwhile, he was taught how to shoot, box, fence and ride by his father. In 1876, the same year he entered Harvard, he became member of America's first ornithological organization, the Natal Ornithological Club. He then traveled extensively to the Magdalen Islands, the Bahamas, and the West Indies, collecting bird specimens. This collection would reach 19,000 specimens. In 1883, he was a founding member of the American Ornithology Union. That same year, he married Harriet W. Peterson, the pair having two children. In 1882, Corey purchased Great Island in West Yarmouth, setting up a game preserve to protect non-game birds. In 1883, his collection became part of the Columbian Field Museum in Chicago, Corey becoming the curator of the Department of Ornithology. In 1895, he opened the Florida Museum of Natural History at Palm Beach, but the museum burned down in 1903. In 1906, he lost his fortune after a market crash, taking a job as curator of zoology at the Field Museum. In 1920, he was stricken with partial paralysis, dying in 1921. Corey wrote many books on birds and mammals, such as The Mammals of Illinois and Wisconsin, or Beautiful and Curious Birds of the World. His sole work of fiction seems to be his Montezuma's Castle and Other Weird Tales from 1899, which we shall be reviewing today. In Montezuma's castle, we see the curiosity dealer for the first time, narrating how he got stranded in an abandoned cliff dwelling due to being betrayed by his associate, and how he found a mummy for his troubles. There is definitely potential here to have someone stranded and unable to escape from a mountainside dwelling shared with a dead body, but Corey stumbles for a few lines about how it isn't ideal before he has his narrator tie some ropes together and be on his way. The Tragedy of the White Tanks is another curiosity dealer story where he wants to play a prank on a quack seller of quote Indian medicine against snake poison. So they switch the snake he normally uses for demonstration with a different one whose poison teeth were removed, but when the man reaches in and gets bitten, he dies from fright. Too Close for Comfort is a Dr. Watson story concerning hypnotism. A friend of Watson's enters a horse into a race but it seems his jockey was hypnotized to not win the race if he sees a white handkerchief. So Watson and co monitor the audience and apprehend the first person they see trying to pull out a white handkerchief. The strange powder of the juju priest has Dr. Watson get an unknown drug out of Africa, so he asks his friends to get high and record their experiences, which are the three following stories. An Aztec mummy has Dr. Farrington detailing a meeting with the ghost of a curiosity dealer, who to all intents and purposes seems to resemble the curiosity dealer from the previous stories. The ghost tells him of how he made a fake mummy for his display, and how his friend used to swindle people with, quote, Indian blankets. A lesson in chemistry has Mr. Forster tell of how a ghost wanted to preach to him about explosives, and takes him to someone else's laboratory to see their experiment blow up in their face, without lethal consequences. An interesting ghost has Watson floating out of his body and meeting an old country doctor's ghost, who tells him about bacteria and gets drunk on the odour of alcohol. The Mound of Eternal Silence has an unreliable narrator, tells of how he murdered his partner at his keep in the desert, but is unable to return for the gold because of a dog at the keep who he says looks like his dead partner. The story of a bad Indian Okay, this one is bound to insult some people reading it. A drunken Native American bothers a woman and her husband for whiskey, accidentally killing their infant son while doing so. And he then proceeds to shoot the baby's corpse and the mother as well, before he gets shot by the father while he sings the death song of his tribe. The story of an insane sailor has Watson read a report written by a mad sailor in an asylum, which he wrote for Watson before he died. The man tells of how his friend drugged the crew of a boat and stole the money on board, sailing to a distant island to shoot game. The narrator loses his share in a poker game, so he poisons his friend to get everything. But when he sails off, he keeps looking over his shoulder not knowing why, and is unable to reach dry land no matter how hard he tries. He then hears his dead friend laughing at him, and when he wakes up the gold is gone. In The Voodoo Idol, Jones steals a voodoo idol off of some priests in Haiti, hides in the US consulate, and shoots a huge black man who tries to kill him before the story just ends. The story, as many others, even ones I left out, 
suffer from ending too suddenly, which is a common issue with Corey's writing. The man seems unable to actually expand and develop an idea properly, which makes the collection come off as rather subpar. 